Assalamu alaikum. Today on 14 January 2021, I'm starting lecture number one for week number 15. And the topics that we will cover in this lecture are the effect of load changes, effect of field current changes, and power factor correction due to synchronous motors. So these are the topics that we will uh, inshallah cover in our lecture. So starting from the first topic, that is the effect of load changes on a synchronous motor. As I told you earlier, that uh, whenever a load on the shaft of the motor is increased, what happens that due to this increase in load, the rotor becomes slow and hence it lags behind the rotating status magnetic field. So due to this uh, lagging of rotor behind the status rotational magnetic field, what happens that the torque angle becomes uh, bigger and due to this increase in torque angle, sine of delta becomes uh, higher and hence the induced tor torque that is basically proportional to sine delta is increased and motor gets back to its original speed. So uh, in short, if we increase the load on the shaft of a synchronous motor, there is a momentarily decrease in the synchronous motor's speed, but uh, eventually the motor comes back to its original speed. So as far as the speed is concerned, motor remains uh, running at, at the constant speed until or unless uh, it uh, reaches the slipping poles uh, situation I explained you in the last lecture. So now coming to the other factors that are being involved in this situation. So as we increase the load of the current, now coming to the other features that basically uh, affect due to this increase in load. So as we increase the load at the shaft of the rotor, what happens that uh, uh, in big B figure that is just beneath A, uh, what happens that as we increase the load, the load current increases. And due to this increase in load current, what happens that the torque angle between the output phase voltage V5 and the internally generated voltage e EA, uh, EA is increased. Uh, since motor is producing real power at its shaft, so if we increase the load on the shaft, all the quantities that are proportional to real power will increase. And what are the quantities that are proportional to real power? These are number one, Ia cos of theta, and number two, Ea sine of delta. So now if we analyze figure B, uh, so we can easily notice or observe that Ia1 was this, And IA2 is bigger or more lengthy in its length as compared to IA1. Why? Because when we increase the load, so the load current IA is increased. Similarly, the uh, quantity that is proportional to real power in this case is IA cos theta. So we can clearly observe that first Ia cos theta was almost uh, of this length, while the second Ia cos theta 
was a bit more. It is almost of this length. So what we can conclude that as we are increasing the load, the load current is increasing and hence the quantity that is proportional to the real power, which is Ia cos theta in this case, is increased. Now coming to the Ea side. We know that Ea has an equation, Ea equals to k phi omega k into phi into omega. Now, these three quantities do not depend upon the load current. So if we increase the load and the load current is increased, it will not affect the magnitude of Ea because Ea depends upon three factors, k which is constant, phi, flux, which is dependent on field current, not, uh, not the armature or the load current, and third, omega, that is the uh, speed of the motor. Since motor is a synchronous motor, it is running at constant speed, so omega is not changing. Since flux is dependent upon field current, so it is not changing. K is also constant. So if we notice in this figure, then Ea1 and Ea2 and similarly Ea3 all are of equal length. You can imagine the starting point that is this point. So you can imagine that starting point as the center of the circle. Then Ea1, Ea2, Ea3 and Ea4. These four lengths represent the radius of the circle. So in short, what we can say that when we increase the load, the load current increases, but it does not affect the magnitude of internally generated voltage. Having said that, that it does not change the magnitude of Ea, does not mean that here the real power will not change. Ea, that is the magnitude of Ea, will remain same, but the factor that is proportional to real power, which is Ea sine delta here, will increase. For example, first Ea sine delta was this, and second Ea sine delta is this, and the third Ea sine delta is this, and similarly, finally, the fourth Ea sine delta in this figure is this. So we can clearly observe that as we are increasing the load, the load current increases and hence the torque angle between V phi and Ea is increased. And due to this increase in torque angle, the quantity is proportional to real power, that is Ea sine delta in this case will increase. We can observe that the first delta angle that is between V phi and Ea was this. While the second delta angle was this, which is more than the first. And similarly, if we now draw the fourth delta angle, so it is quite big. So therefore, what we can say that again, in case of internally generated voltage, its magnitude uh, will not be affected uh, with the increase in load, but the quantity that is proportional to real power, that is Ea sine of delta, will increase because delta is increasing. Due to delta, sine of delta will increase and hence Ea sine of delta will increase. So the quantity is proportional to real power will increase. So in short, when we increase the load current, uh, the speed of the motor remains the same, but 
uh, what happens that the load current is increased, the torque angle is increased, uh, quantity is proportional to real power, that is IA cost of theta and EA sine of delta will increase, while the magnitude of EA will remain constant. So this was uh, the topic. Now, after immediately after this topic, what they did that they have given you an example to solve. So just coming to the example. Uh, in this example, uh, what is the data given? So first of all, they are saying that the motor is 208 volt motor. So one thing you must be uh, having in your mind that whenever they will give you voltage or current so it will al always be uh, a line voltage or a line current until or unless specified because yesterday a child asked how did you say that 208 line voltage so this is the author's psychology that when he doesn't mention it it is line voltage और अगर उसने फेज वोल्टेज बताना होता है वो अलग से बताता है कि ये फेज वोल्टेज है तो हम इस 208 को लाइन वोल्टेज मानेंगे नेक्स्ट उन्होंने उसकी अपेरेंट पावर बता दी 45 किलो वोल्ट एंपियर देन इज द पावर फैक्टर दैट इज 0.8 पावर फैक्टर लीडिंग एंड वी नो दैट पावर फैक्टर मींस cos ऑफ थीटा सो cos ऑफ थीटा इज 0.8 एंड थीटा इज इक्वल्स टू cos इनवर्स ऑफ 0.8 नाउ वन मोर थिंग दैट दे हैव मेंशनड यू that the motor is delta connected. What is the significance of this information? If we know that the three phase connection is of delta type, then in the delta connection, uh, line voltage is equals to the phase voltage, while the phase current is equals to line current whole divided by root three. Again, uh, next they has uh, they have given you. Uh, the frequency of the system and finally they told you that the synchronous reactance x is is 2.5 and then uh, they said that negligible armature resistance so if the armature resistance is negligible then we uh, can say that r a is negligible and hence i square r losses are negligible then they have given you the mechanical losses that are the frictional plus windage losses and then they have given you the core losses that is uh, hysteresis plus eddy current loss and uh, finally they told you that the motor is producing or supplying a 15 horsepower load and the power factor is 0 0.8 leading again this information is repeated now important thing that initially the shaft is supplying a 15 horsepower load you must remember in your uh, you must keep in your mind that at the shaft of the motor we uh, have the output power of the motor so if they are saying that the shaft is providing or supplying a 15 horsepower load it means that the output power of motor is 15 horsepower so starting from this information first of all we compute it uh, 15 horsepower into a kilowatt power so to convert 15 horsepower into kilowatt uh, first of all we will multiply it with 746 then uh, it will become a watt power and then we will divide by 1000 to convert it into a kilowatt power. So in short, to convert 15 horsepower into kilowatt, we will multiply it with 0.746. Okay. Now, adding all the losses in the output power will give us the input power. This step is being performed here. They have added all the losses into the output power to get the input power. So finally, the input power is 13.69 kilowatt. And now we know that the real power has two formulas. 
one for the line voltages that is uh, real power equals to root 3 into vt into il cos of theta uh, where vt is the line voltage and il is the line current and other formula is 3 into V phi into Ia cos of theta. So both formulas are equally applicable here, but the author uh, has chosen uh, the three phase formula at his own choice. So uh, we know that the three phase power formula using the line voltages and line current is P equals to root 3 Vt Il cos of theta. So we know everything other than IL. So in this formula, he made uh, IL the subject of the equation and hence uh, computed IL by uh, putting all the known values. As we all know that uh, P in we calculated earlier was 13.69 kilowatt. Uh, VT was given in the data. It was 208 volt and uh, cos of theta was 0.8 as given in the data. So IL, that is the magnitude of IL is 47.5. And obviously, how can we compute the angle of IL? So we have been given that cos of theta is 0.8, so theta is cos inverse of 0.8. So it is 36.87 as computed here. So now, uh, what they did for calculating the magnitude of IA, they simply divided the magnitude of IL with root 3. Because as I told you earlier that in delta connection, IL divided by root 3 is equals to IA. So what they did, they divided the magnitude of IL with root 3 and hence got the magnitude of IA. So now we have complete armature current, that is we have the magnitude, its magnitude is 27.4, we have its angle, it is 36.87. All we know, uh, all we have to do is to calculate Ea now. So as per the phasor diagram drawn, Ea equals to V5 minus J axis Ia. You can see that uh, the phasor diagram drawn here, if we apply KVL uh, in the triangle, we will get the same answer. That is Ea equals to V5 minus J axis Ia. So what happened that uh, he used this equation here. Uh, V5 was given 208 and its angle was zero because we take V5 as the reference value, reference uh, value of the phasor diagram for synchronous motors. So we uh, knew that its angle is zero and uh, J axis IA, so axis was given as 2.5. So it was used here. And finally, we put the value of IA to compute the final value of internally generated voltage Ea. So in part one, we need to calculate uh, Ia, V5, Ea. So we computed all the three uh, things. Now coming to the B part. In the B part, they are saying that now the load is increased. As the previous topic was effect of load changes. So this example is basically uh dealing with that thing na? that initially the motor was supplying 15 horsepower and now the load is increased to 30 horsepower in b part what they are saying that initially the load was 15 horsepower but now the load is increased to 30 horsepower and what we need to do that we need to draw the sketch diagram that changed sketch diagram again so uh, in short, it is the questions. It is the question that uh, what will be the effect of load changes if we change the load from 15 horsepower to 30 horsepower? So what will happen? 
that obviously all the calculation will be done again. Now the output power is 30 hertz power. So obviously uh, it will increase the input power as well. So first of all, we computed the new uh, input power. So for the new input power, we took output power as 30 hertz power because now the load is 30 hertz power. So the motor is supplying 30 hertz power. Again, we added all the losses to the output 30 hertz power and got the new input power, which is obviously more than the previous input power. Previous input power was 13.69 kilowatt and this new input power is 24.88 kilowatt. Now to get the armature current, uh, what we can do? We know that uh, uh, as I discussed in the theory that increasing the load current does not affect the magnitude of EA. So we use the formula that was uh, proved uh, a bit earlier in this chapter that uh, power equals to three times V phi into EA sine of delta over axis. And in this uh, formula, everything is known other than sine of delta. So we made sine of delta the subject of the equation. Then we computed that sine of delta is 0.391. And then we took sine inverse of 0.391 to get the new delta or torque angle. Why we needed this new torque angle? We knew that uh, Due to increase in load, the magnitude of internally generated voltage will remain 255. It will not change. But its angle, torque angle will change. So what we did that we computed the new torque angle using equation 5.20. So uh, now new EA is 255 angle minus 23. Uh, in this addition, this 355 is basically a typing error. Actually, the magnitude of EA does not change. So the new internally generated voltage is 255 angle minus 23. And what is the evidence? First of all, I told you in theory that EA will not change. And second, that when they used this EA as uh, uh, for the calculation of IE, they wrote 255 here. So uh, the 355 uh, written here is basically a typing error. It is 255 because the magnitude will remain unaffected. We just calculated the new torque angle to give the new uh, internally generated voltage. Okay, now so uh, so we have a, a new EA with us. We have uh, V phi as uh, the reference voltage. So now we can easily compute the new armature current or the load current. So for this thing, what we did, we simply made IA the subject of uh, the equation from the equation of phasor diagram. And hence we calculated the new armature current and which was how much? So which is 41.2 uh, angle 15 degrees. So what you can uh, see that uh, the real power is increased. Why? because uh, IA cos of theta is more. And uh, similarly, uh, we can easily give the power factor of the system now. Why? Because cos of the angle associated with the load current is basically power factor. So power factor is cos of 15 and which is 0.966. 
so the uh, this was the first topic of today's lecture now coming to the second topic effect of field current changes so as we all know that the internally generated voltage sorry the internally generated voltage ea is given by k phi omega so as we increase the field current what happens that this flux will increase and due to this increase in flux the internally generated voltage ea will increase so as far as uh, the internally generated voltage ea is concerned when we will increase the field current ea will increase now coming to the behavior of synchronous motor the behavior of synchronous motor for an increase in field current is that it can act as a lagging power factor in start when the field current is low we can see that the motor is behaving like a lagging power factor motor but when uh, we reach the vortex of this uh, parabola at this position so you can see that they have written power factor equals to 1 so the motor becomes a unity power factor load or a resistive load so in the start when the field current is quite low motor is behaving like a lagging load like an inductive load when we increase the load at a con uh, at a level increase the load to a level uh, where we achieve this vortex situation so what happened that the motor started behaving like a resistive or a unity load now if we further increase the load so we will say that now the motor is uh, operating at leading power factor and what we can say that the motor is operating like a capacitor so the conclusion is that uh, synchronous motor can act as uh, a lagging power factor motor that is a lagging uh, load as a lagging load it can act as a unity power factor or a resistive load and at a high level of field current it can also act as a, a capacitor or leading power factor load this property of synchronous motor uh was used as a, a power factor correction means in history uh, earlier what they used to do Uh, is that they keep the synchronous motor with a huge field current so that it can act as a leading power factor or a capacitive load for the system so when it was acting as a synchronous uh, capacitor or condenser uh, it was used to increase the power factor reduce the line losses and hence economically providing the opportunity to use an inexpensive conductor so uh, for a very long time uh, in electrical power engineering synchronous motor was being used as synchronous condenser and the sole purpose of uh, uh, synchronous motor was there to increase the power factor reduce the line losses and uh, uh, hence providing the opportunity to use an ex inexpensive conductor and hence helping the economy of uh, the power system but when uh, the parasitic capacitors came into use because uh, parasitic cap capacitors were light in weight uh, they can easily installed and dismantled uh, they were quite inexpensive as compared to a synchronous motor so gradually people started using capacitors and the use of synchronous motor as power factor in correction means become obsolete 
okay so this was the effect of uh, field current now again uh, let you uh, let me explain one more figure okay these are the two figures that uh, are being drawn for effect of uh, field current changes so what we can see that as we increase the field current so what happens that uh, uh, if the motor is running at a lower field current it was operating as a lagging armature current machine at a lagging load when we kept the voltage increasing sorry field current increasing what happened that gradually armature current became parallel to the x axis that is it started acting as a unity or a resistive load because v5 was along the positive x axis ia was along the positive x axis so at this stage the motor is acting as a unity or resistive load since v5 and ia are parallel now we kept the field current increasing so what happened that now ia is ahead of v5 so motor started operating as a leading load finally at i4 the phase angle become again increased and hence motor is again working as a leading load but what is the point to be noted that the vertical dotted lines drawn here and here these dotted lines are uh, explaining that uh, no matter that ia is being uh, increased or decreased in this case but the quantity that is proportional to real power that is ia cos theta in all four cases is the same and that is the length of basically ia cos of theta for ia1 the length was again this line uh, ia2 the length is again at uh, the same so what they want uh, you to understand is that increasing the field current increases ea but it will not increase the quantities proportional to real power because the quantities proportional to real power will uh, increase only if we increase the load current so changing or increasing the uh, field current does not increase the load current okay so this is the case uh, now coming uh, to the other fact that when we increase a uh, field current so what happens that ea increases suppose this is ea1 so it is of shorter length now if we compare it with ea2 drawn here so obviously it is or of more length and similarly ea3 is much larger or bigger than as compared to ea2 and finally ea4 has the highest magnitude but again increase in ea does not affect the length ea sin of delta so in all four cases ea sin delta is basically from here to here that is in all four cases ea sin delta remains constant so the dotted lines drawn here are known as the lines of constant real power first dotted line is this which is the line of constant real power and the second dotted line is this which is line of constant real power and why we are saying them the lines of constant real power because at the first line ea sin of delta 1 ea sin of delta 2 ea sin of delta 3 and ea sin of delta 4 are were equal and in the second line 
आई ए कॉस ऑफ थीटा वन आई ए कॉस ऑफ थीटा टू आई ए कॉस ऑफ थीटा थ्री एंड आई ए कॉस ऑफ थीटा फोर ऑल लेंस वर इक्वल जस्ट गिव मी अ मिनट आई एम कमिंग बैक so coming uh, back to the topic so here what we concluded that the quantity is uh, proportional to real power i a cos of theta and e a sin of delta remains constant uh, and uh, magnitude of e a is increased and the motor initially was uh, working as a lagging power factor then it become uh, a resistive load and finally it is working as a a leading power factor a motor so after the field current changes what they did that they again gave you uh, an exercise a uh, numerical so what is the numerical here uh, they are saying that the same machine that we discussed in example 6.1 uh is uh, working at the same specs that is uh, output voltage is 208 volt initially the power factor is 0.8 leading connection is again the delta connection here and the frequency is also the same that is 60 hertz in short all the information is uh, of the same machine that was being discussed in example 6.1 so in part a we have to sketch the initial phasor diagram so obviously since all the losses are the same so we took the input power from the first part of the previous example where we computed that the input real power is equals to 13.69 kilowatt so here he computed the armature current directly because he is using uh, the power of 3 watt meter method so what happened that in 3 uh, watt meter method input power is equals to 3 time v phi i a cos of theta and in this formula we just have one i a as unknown all other things are known so he made ia the subject of the formula and hence he computed the magnitude of ie and again uh, what we can do for the angle uh power factor was basically given 0.8 but uh, uh, i think uh, it is a typing mistake or uh, what we can say but he computed cos inverse of 0.85 so what happened that uh, uh, using this fact he computed the angle minus 31.8 as i told you earlier that we compute uh, the phase angle theta using the power factor now we know the output and the input power we know uh, what are the magnitudes of v phi and i a so all we know Uh, all we have to do for drawing a phasor diagram is to compute e a so again using the phasor diagram equation we compute e a and hence uh, uh, we got e a as 182 angle minus 17.5 so this was quite the same thing we did in the previous example so this is the phasor diagram that is being drawn for the first part v5 was given 208 angle 0 ea ea we computed 182 angle minus 17.5 and j axis ia is nothing to do except it joins ea with v5 so it is directly drawn here 
so after part 1 we uh, have drawn these three lines to have the initial phasor diagram now what happens that in part b they are saying that uh, they have increased the field current by 25% because this numerical is dealing with the increase in field current so if they have increased the field current by 25% so ea will increase by 25% so what we did we simply increase the magnitude of ea by 25% here simply multiply it magnitude of ea that is 182 with 1.25 to give it an increase of 25%. So the new magnitude is 227.5. <coughs> Now how we can compute the angle that is the new angle of EA? So for this they have used the property that the first height EA sin of delta 1 would be equal to the second height ea sin of delta 2 so therefore they wrote ea sin of delta 1 is equals to ea sin of delta 2 now we have the magnitude of first ea we have the torque angle that is delta 1 of first ea uh, we have the new magnitude of ea 2 and all in this equation is not unknown is only the sin delta 2 so we calculated sin delta 2 then we calculated sin inverse of the angle <coughs> sin inverse of ea1 over ea2 into sin of delta 1 so we got the angle delta 2 and hence we computed the new eas uh, 227.5 angle minus 13.9 finally we made ie the subject of uh, the phasor uh, diagram equation to to compute the new armature current and we computed the new armature current as 22.5 angle 13.2 here and now if you can observe that this time the power factor is 0.974 which was more than the power factor that was computed in the previous example which is an evidence that increasing the field current increases the power factor now the third part is for drawing the graph of the system so we don't have to do this part so coming to the last topic of today's lecture that is how can we use synchronous motor for power factor correction uh the author has given you a very good uh, real time example of this situation that how a synchronous motor can uh, increase the power factor of the system so just we just start directly the example to explain this thing so example 6.3 has this figure for explanation uh, it has two parts in the first part what they are saying that an infinite bus is feeding these three motors where the first two motors are the induction motors that are obviously a lagging load motor uh, are uh, lagging load motors and then the third motor is a synchronous motor which can act both as a lagging load or a leading load so what they did that in the first part they assumed that the synchronous motor is also operating as a lagging load so all three motors are operating as lagging load so the question is that what is uh, the power factor of the system and how many line losses are occurring in the this system then in the second part what they did they changed the synchronous motor from a lagging load to a leading load and then they are asking 
that now what is the power factor of the system and uh, what are the line losses and is there any change in the power factor and the line losses of the system so these are the two questions that we will deal in this example so first of all starting with the part one that if we want to compute uh, that what is the power factor of this system uh, so what we will do we will draw a right angle triangle to explain you some uh, something so this is the perpendicular of power triangle discussed in chapter one this is the base of the power triangle this is the hypotenuse of the power triangle this is the acute angle theta and this is the right angle we all know that in a power triangle the hypotenuse is represented by s the perpendicular is repre represented by q and the base is represented by real power p so what is the data being given to us they have given us the real powers of all three motors they have given us the power factors of all three motors so power factor is cos of theta for the first motor cos of theta is 0.78 so theta is cos inverse of 0.78 for the second motor theta is point uh, cos theta is 0.8 so theta is cos inverse of 0.8 for the third motor uh, cos theta is 0.85 and theta is cos inverse of 0.85 now what we can do that from this right angle triangle which is known as the power triangle we can see that tan theta is equals to perpendicular upon base that is q upon p and hence what we can conclude that q equals to p time tan theta q equals to that is reactive power equals to p time tan theta so we were given the real power p we were having thetas of the three motors so we computed reactive power for all three motors for the first motor reactive power is p1 tan theta so p1 was 100 theta was cos inverse of 0.78 so tan of theta this is theta basically cos inverse of 0.78 means theta so this is theta so we can uh, read it as 100 kilowatt tan of theta so hence we computed the reactive power q1 in a similar manner we calculated reactive power q2 and again in a similar manner we computed reactive power q3 so when we computed all the reactive powers and we were having all the real powers what we did that we added all the real powers to get an effective or overall real power we uh, added all the uh, reactive powers to have a overall uh, reactive power now again coming to the uh, power triangle if we if we want to compute the system's power factor then we need cos theta to be calculated in this power triangle so in this triangle cos theta is equals to q upon p in this power triangle what is cos theta uh, sorry 
cos theta equals to basically 10. Uh, first of all, we will calculate theta. So how can we calculate theta? Theta we will calculate theta equals to 10 inverse of Q upon P. This is theta from the power triangle. Theta equals to 10 inverse of Q upon P. This is the angle theta. Now after calculating theta, we will take cos of this angle to have the power factor. So this is the step they have done here. First of all, the, they computed theta using 10 inverse of Q upon P from the power triangle and then they took cos of this theta to get the uh, power factor of the system. So for part A, when the synchronous motor was running as a lagging load, the power factor was poor. It was 0.812 lagging. Now for line losses, what we will do? We know that the input power is 450 kilowatt for the system. So we took the formula for three phase power. That is the two watt meter method power and hence we computed that IL that is the load current line current is equals to 667 ampere. So it will give huge uh, I square R losses because I square R losses are obviously proportional to I square. So if I is 667, then I square is huge. OK, so initially the power factor was 0.812 and the line losses are proportional to 667 square. Now coming for the second part, what happened in the second part that uh, uh, all the other things remained the same, but the synchronous motor is now acting as a lagging load, so a, a leading load, sorry. Now synchronous motor is acting as a leading load. So what will be the change uh, for a leading load? Reactive power becomes negative. So the magnitude of reactive power remains the same, but we have a negative sign associated with it. So it becomes negative. What is the reason for a leading load? Power triangle becomes like this. P Q downwards because it is negative. And hypotenuse here. So obviously Q is negative. Our angle theta is obviously here. So we take Q as negative. So the effect is that overall real power remains the same. That is 450. But overall reactive power is now decreased. Due to this decrease in reactive power, we have a smaller value here. And hence, we have a smaller fraction for tan inverse. So obviously, a smaller fraction will give up an answer closer to zero. And for cost of uh, a value closer to zero, we will have greater power factor because cost of zero is ideal one. So if we are coming near to cost of zero, then we are improving the power factor. So you can clearly observe that previously the power factor was 0.812, but when we use the synchronous motor as a leading load, its reactive power become negative, which decreased the overall reactive power and which as a result increase the power factor of the system. Now in the three phase formula, if we have increased the power factor here, what happens that overall it will uh, result as a decrease in the line current. So we can clearly observe that previously the line current was 667 ampere and now it is 566 ampere. 
so it is much lower as compared to the previous 667 ampere finally we computed the line losses both for the 667 three phase system and for the 566 three phase system and we get uh, the result that the new system with the higher power factor has 28% uh, less line losses as compared to the previous system. So this was the conclusion that when we use the synchronous motor as a leading power factor with locked rotor condition, what happens that it increases the power factor and it reduces the line current. And uh, as a result, line losses are reduced. And when line losses are reduced, we can use a conductor of uh, low capacity that will uh, facilitate our economical uh, expenditures. So hence using uh, a synchronous motor uh, as a lock rotor motor with a leading power factor was basically uh, in history, it was giving three advantages to the users. Number one, it was increasing the power factor. Number two, it was reducing the line losses. Number three, when the line losses are reduced, so the current that will be passing through the conductor will be less, so we can use an economically inexpensive uh, conductor. So it saved uh, us economy uh, economically as well. So that was uh, the end of this chapter. And inshallah, we will uh, start uh, uh, the next chapter in uh, the last lecture of uh, this uh, uh, semester. Uh, uh, now we will have a short break and inshallah, we will start the next lecture at 10 o'clock. If you want, you can ask any questions. Okay, so how much you can say that you have to say that you have so inshallah 10 baje phir aakhri lecture ke sath aap se milte hain till then take care and allah hafiz